Hello friends and welcome to my tentative list of the best soft supports in the patch right now. If you want to see the hard supports, check out my last video. And if you want to know the logic behind what I'm looking for in a good support, then you can see the uh, the video on how to be a good support in the current patch. Uh, just keep in mind, this is all, you know, subject to change as the patch continues to develop. Heroes will move up and down. Let's get right into it though. Uh, first off, maybe not too exciting, it's Rubik. Uh, he's been at the top of this list for quite a while in the last few patches, but what's really changed, you know? Uh, there's still a lot of early fighting, and in fact, this patch, there's even more strong spellcasters being picked. A lot of supports are being picked that have good shards because the Tormentors are giving free shards, so Rubik, when he gets his shard, he gets the benefit of all the ones he's stolen. So, I mean, I, I can't take him off this list. He's just so good. Uh, I would say one nerf to him this patch is that the Tome of Knowledge got removed, and... Uh, Rubik, if he had a good lane or a bad lane, you could kind of depend on that tome to help you get a pretty consistent level 6 timing around the 10 minute mark, maybe a little later, you know? Currently, nothing like that, no outpost XP, if you don't get the wisdom rune either, and you're having a bad lane, uh, you know, you're kind of falling behind on Rubik, and it's going to feel a bit awkward, so I'd say that part is... Um, kind of the struggle for him, but as long as you're, you know, having a decent laning stage, you're getting to six relatively early. There's even more potential for that now if you're having a good game. Uh, so uh, win harder, maybe lose harder as well compared to last patch. But if you're on the winning side, you're going to steal some cool spells. You're going to pop between the twin gates. You're going to have a great time. Next, I think I'm going to include Bounty Hunter. Uh, your pub mileage may vary a little bit here. You know, when you get some like Necrophos, Sniper, uh, Luna, Tricor, and everyone's just farming, feels pretty awkward. But if you have at least like two heroes willing to be aggressive in your game, then Bounty Hunter feels really nice to be that third hero. Uh, this patch, um, the sentries got nerfed, the map is bigger, so he has an easier time moving around finding targets, and once he finds them, he now has a stun on Shadow Walk. Before this, he liked the early fighting because if you get kills with track, you get extra gold, woohoo, right? But what did he bring besides the track and the scouting? A little bit of damage, but you're like a low-level support, you know? So it's like not that impressive. And some slows, I guess, right? But now you actually stun people and you can go in Viz, stun them, pop it again, stun them a second time. So even with level one Shadow Walk, that is two seconds of stun, you max it out, 3.2 seconds of stun, whoa, that's pretty good. Uh, you also can apply your Shadow Walk to allies once you get the shard, maybe for free. And at level 15, you get a 25% damage reduction talent if you're in Shadow Walk. So now you have this like aggressive scouting and setup potential. And then you have this utility kind of defensive potential of turning your teammates invis and making them take less damage. Your itemization, you can build whatever to fit the team. Drums uh, into Boots of Bearing is good. Some Pipe, Crimson Guard, I've seen all of that. Greaves. Phylactery is a pretty cool build that I've seen some people do. I haven't tested it myself quite yet, but Track is very low cooldown. Shuriken's low cooldown. So you get a lot of like spell casting, extra damage, extra slow when you use those with the uh, Phylactery, or I think someone told me Phylactery. I don't, I don't know. I'm not educated. I just play Dota. I don't know how to pronounce things. Uh, so some cool builds out there for Bounty, and I think he's better than ever. The Invis means you can bounce between lanes too, so people never know where you are. So great. After this, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who I want to bring up to this top support level. Uh, so why don't we just start running through here and maybe we can decide together. So Chen and Enchantress, in any patch that they've been good, the specialists, they don't care. They play them four and five, and I think this patch is no different. But the downside of playing them four instead of five is that the four roll tends to have more initiating type heroes, which means if you pick Chen or Enchantress as your four, and then your five picks like some Dazzle, you know, super awkward support duo. Uh, the, the initiators tend to be on the four roll. You know, you can see many of them here, uh, including now newly Bounty Hunter as well. Uh, so... That's the, that's the downside, but if one of your cores, like the offlane and or the mid, pick active initiating type heroes, then it's it's really not a big deal. And this is also a pub game, so your draft doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, so if you want to play them, I think they're fine. Marana, she's also been very popular. We, we could probably move her to the top supports as well. 
Um, but I mean, what even changed, right? She became a universal hero, which actually made her early damage better in the laning stage when she buys up all these iron branches and stuff. Just lots of annoying right click. You still got the uh, Star Storm build, or you can go for your arrow. Eventually, you do get the arrow. You're bouncing between lanes, ganking with that arrow. You've got the invis that uh, is harder to deal with. If you don't find any gank targets, your arrow instantly kills creep. Flexible items. So, I mean, you know, leap mobile mat right i mean how many more can we add like what's her problem I, I don't know so she's still really good and uh you know we'll just go ahead and throw her on there this is looking a lot like the last patches tier list so ugh. io and keeper of the light we can kind of clump these two together they are uh, mana and health batteries io more so in the laning stage provides tons of extra regen to his lane partner all these heroes that wanted to use spells right you give them the mana you give them spell amp attack speed amp for certain heroes as well and then you've got relocate for the global mobility around the map uh, keeper of the light does something similar but is less dependent on his team compared to io but still a little bit dependent the blinding light change made him much easier to play in the laning stage i would say very easy to accidentally grief with illuminate right i was trying to harass i didn't mean to steal all the creeps ha 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 you know uh but blinding lights much easier you more control over it to knock people here and there especially a lot of the melee heroes that are very popular right now so i think keeper has been having a better laning stage and then you provide the mana for the spell casters you lower the cooldown you're one of the best multi stackers in the game you've got your auto attacks you've got fast move speed you've got illuminate you got blinding light right and then uh, in the team fights, when you ult and then you use your illuminate, you also provide health. So you kind of offer a lot for these early fighting metas. If you get one of the free shards, you even have recall for this giant map. You can send your teammates up top or, you know, send one teammate, recall them back. Uh, so I think he's really good, but, you know, you got to lean on the team. Io as well, but even more so. So how much do you want to do that? Up to you. If you play any party queue, if you duo with anyone, these are really good supports. I would put Keeper up here, I think. I'm just I'm just scared to, you know, because of the communi uh, the communication and coordination. Let's say if you're like mid bracket or higher, I think it's very safe to play Keeper right now. He's just that good. And if you're lower, you know, be a little hesitant. But you can still do it, just know what you're getting into. Uh Spirit Breaker, Tusk, Earth Spirit. And actually, you know what? Let's let's group Monkey King as well. These are all just classic fours from the last patch good initiators they like all this early fighting they're very mobile uh so you can't really go wrong with any of them uh spirit breaker you know laning stage can be a little awkward but once you get going you are charging you are present in all the lanes you can go to the wisdom runes and then be back in the lanes faster than pretty much anyone else uh, so lots of great roaming potential for Spirit Breaker, uh, Tusk, same deal, maybe a little bit more utility side with the snowball saves and stuff like that, less uh, overall mobility, but you can still go over trees, up and down all the new cliffs with snowball once you find the target, tag team, great for these early fights, BKB piercing, uh, ult still, you know, uh, Earth Spirit the roll, very low cooldown, just initiating all these fights, magnetize, very powerful, a silence to reduce the spell casters as well in between your stuns. Monkey King, very strong laning stage against many melee heroes that are popular right now, thanks to Jingu. Then, you know, you're hopping between trees on this giant map. You're stunning from those treetops. People don't know you're there. Uh, and then you get to scale as a core. Best scaling potential probably out of uh, this group here. Maybe Spirit Breaker second when he gets some items. He gets crazy. But Monkey King, you know, he can be played as a carry or a mid right now. So if you're playing support Monkey King long enough, you can start scaling into that if you want. Nyx, I think, is also potentially really good. And he might be the one I move up here to this top five he he got buffed with the the map changes because he's very fast in his ult you can find the targets and they don't have as many sentries to detect you once you find them you know you stun you set up for your team in the past you really needed your team uh, because you just don't have enough damage on your own to get kills but now you kind of can there's mind flare which helps you do more damage it like does 30 percent of the total damage you've done in the last 12 seconds to a target uh, and you get that as bonus damage so that can sometimes push you over the edge on its own uh, plus the fact you might have a free shard which is reducing the enemy's magic resistance so that you do more damage you could also get a dag and that's not even griefing right now if you go look at what the pros are building tons of them are trying nyx dagon part of that is because it's a pub game and if you see like pros playing nyx support they tend to still go the classic like blink um yules four staff ags those kind of items but in a pub game with the chaos and all that especially against squishy heroes 
you, you go find him with the invis, maybe you got the shard or not, you hit him, you stun, you, you spike carapace if you have that, you dagon, you mind flare for that bonus. The burst potential is insane, and it's really hard to play against that in pub games because pretty much what you have to do is like stay clumped together so that he can't just pick people off. You know that's not going to happen in your pub game. Someone always splits off, and that's when you find them as Nyx. Maybe you kill them on your own, or maybe you ask your team, hey, help me kill this guy. They go through the twin gauge, they TP over, you jump them, because you still provide tons of stun on your own. So overall, a very great hero, but a little bit dependent on his team, and his his laning stage is uh, much weaker than uh, many of these other fours that you could pick instead. So I'd say that's his, his biggest issue in pubs. Um, if you come out to a bad lane because you don't know how to handle it or your off laner doesn't know how to handle it, then you don't really get to the fun part of like dagoning people. The remaining heroes here are all very annoying. In the laning stage, Techies became a universal hero, so he has more damage. And because he has the stun on his blast off, I mean, he was, he was viable in the last patch. And now, like even more so, you don't even have to buy the shard. Uh, you get the stun for free, and although the silence was good, very long stun long silence in the last patch, stuns are just easier to use, you know, so you whittle people down with your better harass, and eventually you commit with the blast off, your off laner falls up, you get a kill. Later on, you're playing the game right, blast off, stun set up for your team, tons of damage with your, like, magic combo, uh, your ult reduces magic resist, and the taser, your W, very good against many of the popular melee heroes because it's just disarming right-click heroes, right? So, overall, a very good hero. Don't hate me, but I, I actually think he's legitimate. You know, you're seeing, you're seeing him in the pro scene. He's never, never in the pro scene. He's so rare to see him there. So that's how you know he's actually viable. Skywrath, lots of annoying right clicks into the, the roaming potential, fast hero with the long range slows, ult, tons of damage there. If any of your teammates have set up, that's probably a kill. Then you got the silence to prevent all the strong spellcasters on the enemy team from doing anything and to amplify the strong spellcasters on your team because it buffs up the spell damage. So very good hero. You got the hoodwink, spell damage amp on her shard. Are you seeing a trend here? Her laning stage, maybe a little weaker than the others because her slower attack time, but she's still very annoying. Lots of poke. Uh, you got the bushwhack stun set up. Huge damage on the ult. Got a break too for uh, uh, when you need that. So she's pretty cool too. Pugna, very annoying laning stage, long range poke amplifies magic damage more of a heal bot though compared to these others um, that we're kind of comparing them to with the annoying laning stage you just kind of like you know drain into your allies your healing has been amped compared to the past you do still help your team play aggressive and you can go a bit more of an aggressive build if you're a four pugna compared to five pugna healing ward is good in these early fights so you know i think pugna's got a good spot here and then Venomancer's laning stage with the Blood Grenade. I mean, anyone can buy Blood Grenade, but when you combine it with his other slows, it is a death sentence if someone steps out too far, which happens all the times in pubs. Right now, it's more common to go a max uh, passive build, your W, uh, just for more damage. And uh, the Plague Ward, you know, one value point to apply that passive. You can still max Plague Wards first, especially if you're doing more like zone control, but it's not so common anymore. The passive's better to combine with your new ultimate, which is much easier to use as a, um, just as a hero in general, actually. Venomancer didn't have a lot of stats before. Oh, I forgot to say, he became a universal hero, so he has more right-click damage than he's ever had at the start of the game. But um, in the past, he was very squishy, and he had to, like, get point-blank range to use Poison Nova to hit a lot of heroes, right? And then you get killed, and it's like, ah, I hope my poison does enough. But now, Noxious Plague is much easier to use from a distance, so you can stay back and continue to apply your passive, continue to spam out wards to get vision on this new crazy map uh, throughout the team fight without having to like run in and die to use your ult. So all of that has made him much better as well. For the rest of these heroes, some I have seen a lot and I just think they're average. Others I haven't seen enough and they, you know, sometimes seem good, sometimes seem bad. So they're just in this average category for now. If you know how to play any of these heroes and you're good at it, then I think it's fine to play them. But if you are here to learn a new four support, I would probably pick one of these up here in uh, one of these two categories because they're just overall better in more general cases, at least from what I've seen. I could be wrong. And if you if you think one of these are really good, let me know. Uh, in the bad tier, this is mostly here if you, you're coming back after a long break. Um, these are heroes that used to be able to play the four role uh, somewhat, but they're just... I, would, I wouldn't do it anymore. Uh, Ricky's the most recent addition here. He was really good with the shard last patch, but that is been, that's been removed, and I, just, I don't see much potential for him as a support right now. 
Um, Shadow Demon, I think, could maybe move up. Same with Grimstroke. But I just haven't seen them a lot in my games to really get a strong feeling for yet. But uh, I think they have a bit more potential. I think Line and Venge I still find a bit disappointing, especially when comparing them to a lot of these supports up here. And then Pudge, if you are some, like, sniper pudge who always lands the hooks then you know go for it when you gank between lands and you keep hooking getting kills getting these flesh heaps then he's gonna be awesome you know and the alt very short range pierces bkb so really good potential there if you can't hit your hooks play someone else he he doesn't offer a lot i know that you can hook like creeps to get farm and that's cool and all but you gotta hook the heroes to have the potential and and no matter what I say, I know he'll still be popular in pubs, but that's kind of why he's down here. I just think there's too often um, not not the best hook landing. That is it. Again, reminder, these might move up and down. The patch is still developing. And if you think, you know, some of that should be right now, let me know. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but besides that, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.